In this video, we're going to do a simple overview of our CAD CAM processes and then go into simulation. We'll make a small block like this just to share how to mill out a boss and a small pocket here and get our total profile shape. To get started, we're going to open up HSM Works by just going to our start menu and typing in HSM Works. I already have it loaded, but this should open HSM Works through SolidWorks. And then when you open up SolidWorks and you create a new file, I'll open up a part. I'll hit OK. You should have a CAM tab in addition to the CAM tabs that come with SolidWorks. The first thing that we're going to do is create a template to put the Z in the upwards position. SolidWorks has it in CAD mode where the Z is facing you in the screen. What we're going to do is take that Z and bring it up and then create a small template. In order to do this in SolidWorks, it's easy to pull up the orientation menu using the space bar. And if you click update standard views, we're going to take the original view and update it. But before we do that, make sure you're looking at the front. So your Y is now pointing up and your X is pointing uh, to the right. Now when you press the space bar, the cube should look something like this. We'll click update standard view. And we actually want this to be the top, not the front. So click the top icon right here and it will say changing the standard view and we'll say yes. So now if you look at the bottom left of your screen, it should say top. And then your Y and X is actually what we're looking down on. So now when I exit my orientation, I can press control seven or go back to my isometric view and my Z is now pointing up and my Y and X is in the correct direction. The last thing that we need to do is change the plane names. So when you hit space bar, the front plane is still labeled as the top plane and the top plane is the front plane. So we can slow click and just to change the first one, just give it a random name. I'm just gonna add a, another two. You can't call two planes the same thing. So now this one will become my front plane and this one will be my top plane. Now when I click here, it's top, and I know that that makes sense because my Z is pointed up. I want this uh, template to also be in inches and pounds, and I wanna make sure my length measurements have three decimal places. That's very important. I'll hit okay, and now I've just created a template for uh, setting up some of my CNC jobs and my CAM stuff. So I'm gonna hit file, save as and in the type change that to a part template so part dot and then save it to something that makes sense for you okay and now i know that this is my z up and save that i'm now going to go file save as and then i'm going to save this as a part file and then save it wherever you're saving your your parts and that should change your part now to not be the template this way you can always go back, open up the template and your Z will be up and you don't have to do that every single time. Now that we've created our workspace and we know that our Z is up, we're going to go to our sketch tab and start creating our part. I am going to reference the origin here and I'll draw from the top plane. And I'm just gonna make a five by three rectangle and use the rectangle tool. 
And we want to make sure that this is fully defined. If you look at the bottom, it says fully defined. So check your constraints and relations to make sure that everything is fine. I'm going to exit my sketch. I can double check to see it's fully defined. I'll go to my features. I'll do an extruded boss base. This is going to be 0.5 inches from the sketch plane. It's a blind extrude and I'll hit check. And I should have a half inch part here. I'll go to my sketch menu again. I'm going to create a new sketch on the top plane here of my part. I'm going to offset the entities. Uh, you could also draw a rectangle or, or whatever. You can select the face or the individual edges. I'm going to offset this in the reverse direction one inch. This section is going to be extruded once it's fully defined. I will extrude this a quarter inch and I will merge the results. My last step is to create a pocket inside of this. I'll create a sketch and I'll click sketch. I'm going to click that top face and I'm going to go to center point straight slot right here. And I want to be drawing on this face. I'm actually just going to kind of rough out my slot here. I'll make sure that it's vertical. I'm going to make a half inch diameter slot. My distance, I will smart dimension the long dimension here. I'll make that two inches. To get the center point of this face here, I'm going to select the line tool and I'm going to click for construction. And I'm just going to drag this from corner to corner. And my midpoint should show up. I'll click the point tool here. And just to ensure I get that midpoint, I will click and add that point here. Now I can coincident the center to that midpoint by deselecting my tool, holding shift and clicking on both of those points and clicking coincident. Now the only thing I need to do is actually add that radius back in and I'll just smart dimension this radius here and I'll hit enter because I already entered that when I defined my sketch. I'm fully defined. I'll exit my sketch. I will rotate my part so you can see and I'm going to go to extruded cut now and I'm going to cut that half an inch in. Since it's a cut, it already knows it's going uh, into the part. I'll click check and now I've just created a pretty simple part to be machined out. Now that I've created a part, I'm just going to save to make sure I don't lose any work. I'm going to roll over to my cam tab and I'm going to start setting up my part. The first thing that we need to do is click create a new job. So we're going to create the setup stock as we move through this entire part. I'm going to do a milling operation. It's selected my model. If you created a model previously and just want to go into cam, you can load your part right here. We're going to choose fixed size box, so we're going to use predetermined stock. Uh, right now, we're just creating uh, the piece of material that we're cutting out of. So let's just say we're going to use a six by six block, and then uh, we're going to make this uh, one inch tall. We'll pretend that the bottom of this material has already been um, trued up to the machine, or it's perfectly flat. 
So what we're gonna do is offset from the bottom and we're gonna say zero inches. That way we know that our part is sitting on the bottom of the stock. We have uh, the ability to move this part. So what I'm gonna do is go to the left and I'm going to offset this a half an inch from the left. I'm gonna do the same thing on the Y and I'll do a half an inch here. And when I rotate this, it puts my part in this bottom left corner to save some of the extra stock. I've now set up the majority of this part. Where it says round to the nearest, I'm gonna just put 1,000th in, just to make sure that I get all of those decimal places. It's asking me where I'd like to uh, create a work coordinate system. So I need to use the, the stock and the model to uh, build that profile. So when I drop down, you can see there's a lot of different options. I'm gonna say stock and orientation, and where it says top center, we're gonna to click top corner one. We can see our Z is the blue, it's up, the Y is in this positive long direction, and then the X is in this other uh, short direction. Uh, the milling machine that I'm setting this up for has a long Y and a short X, it's a, it's a router table. That should be all we need to get this part started. So we'll zero the machine off here and anything we create is negative Z. I'll scroll down. We don't need to change the work offset. We're gonna use the default G54 uh, work offset. So that would be work offset number zero. If we need to, we can do a uh, program name and any comments. Once you've set up your job, hit check. And if you scroll over to the top, you should get a new tab for HSM and it populated our part. We're gonna set up a tool. So the first thing that we need to do is go to our tool library. In the tool library, uh, we have our document here. We're gonna right click our document and it, hit import tools from library. I've already created a uh, library for this brand of tools that I downloaded off of their site. So when I go to the vendor's site, I can find the tool I'm looking for. And in this case, they have a whole list of uh, downloadable files. So I'm gonna import that library here, and then I'm gonna scroll down to find the tool that I'm looking for and make any additional changes that I need to. I'm looking for the RU2100 from Whiteside. It's a quarter inch upcut with a uh, one inch flute length. I'll hit okay. And now that I have my tools, I can start creating uh, tool paths. So the first thing we're gonna do is face off this material to get down to the top of our part. Again, this is meant to be an intro for process. So in this video, we'll just do the facing operation. We'll go to 2D milling and we'll click face. It's asking for a tool and we'll click our library here and we'll go down and find that tool that we're looking for. We want again that RU2100, we'll click select. And now you can see it's populated all the feeds and speeds automatically for us. If we want, we can come back and edit this tool and we'll go through those menus in a minute. Let's set up the tool path first. The next tab we'll walk over is the geometry tab. We're not gonna check anything because we just wanna face off the entire stock. So see this orange border? That means we're facing off the entirety of this part. We'll move to the next tab, the heights tab. We're gonna work from the bottom of this list and I'll show you a side view so that you can see where each of these um, heights are in relation to the part and the stock. So we'll start from the bottom. It's asking the, the bottom of our, our cut for this tool path, the facing, it should be the model top. So that's totally correct. Here we could add a little bit of an offset to come back and do a finishing pass. I'm not super worried about this particular part. Again, this is for demonstration. 
we're going to click from stock top for the top of the part. So that's where our feed will begin. So when it starts cutting, it knows that it should be at the stock top, which I said was an inch. Our part is about three quarters of an inch. Our feed height is going to be 0.2 inches above where we're cutting. Okay, so our material is here. Here's our feed height. And then our retract height is going to be that same distance. The stock top, stock top, also the top is 0.2 above that. So our retract and feed height are the same place. And then the clearance height is going to be another 0.4 inches above that. So if we had a clamp or a bolt or a screw, uh, we would make sure we always cleared that and moved over. And that will stay the same for now. Later on, we'll change some of these values to speed up our processes. We'll move over to the passes tab. The things that we need to worry about right now, most importantly, is the step over. Right now it's set to about 95% of the cutter. We're gonna move that down to about 0.2 inches and that will overlap the passes with, uh, which will make our job a little bit longer, but we'll play with that in a second. The degrees will change which direction we're gonna be cutting in. For now, we'll see what it automatically produces, and then we can always go back and change this. The other things to think about are the pass extension. If we want the bit to go completely off the stock, uh, as opposed to uh, sitting on the edge of the stock and coming up, that way we kind of fully clear the whole part, we can add the pass extension here. Um, for the direction, we're going to click climb. We want to make sure we're cutting this the correct direction the whole way. If we're cutting this in some soft wood, sometimes it's good to go back and forth a little bit. But for now, we'll use the tool in its appropriate orientation and we'll do climb cutting the whole time. We'll move to the next tab, the linking tab. Uh, this is connecting each tool path. So in this case, when we make a pass all the way down to face it, we'll come all the way back to the other side. We'll leave everything here pretty standard. We're gonna click extend before retract, which means it's gonna fully clear the part before uh, the tool exits the facing operation. We'll do a lead in and lead out to give it just a little bit of room on the edges as it comes into the part. That's the basics for setting up this particular facing operation. We'll click okay and see that it populated a face here. If we drop that menu down, it has our tool and our work coordinate system. I would rather go the long way. So I'm going to come back, right click the facing operation, click edit, and I'll go over and select 90 degrees for my, for my angle. I'll check that. And now you can see it has adjusted to the opposite side. So I'm cutting 90 degrees to the normal orientation. If I wanted to, I could right click and hit edit for the tool and it'll pull up my tool library just for this particular tool. I'll go over to the general. If I'm numbering my tools, this would be tool number one. So my program has to match my uh, HMI or my machine. The coolant, in this case, since I'm using a router table, the flood coolant turns on the dust collector. So that's OK. That would be the M8 command. Um, and then it just has all the product information for this particular tool. The cutter itself is a quarter inch cutter. It has a one inch flute and all of the other uh, parameters are uh, listed in this particular tab. The shaft I, I'm not worried about right now. The holder itself has the standard Call it holder, we could add our own holder. Again, right now, not worried about it. You can change and make custom holder geometry if you'd like. The feed and speed tab, which is the most important. We want to make sure that we're using the right spindle speed for our router. 20,000 is a good number for us. We have a spindle that's 8,000 to 24,000, so 20,000 is pretty good. The manufacturer recommends about 18,000, but then you have to make sure if you raise your spindle speed, you're also changing your chip load or the feed per tooth. I have two flutes on this particular tool and I'm cutting at about 160 inches a minute. My ramp feed rate is a little slower. So as I'm coming into the part, I'm slowing down. 
This is generally good. Sometimes, depending on the operation, you'll need to adjust this. Again, I'm sitting at four thousandths of an inch, depending on the material. This is very thin for like a wood or MDF or something, so we should get a pretty good cut. Feel free to adjust these as needed. And that should complete this setup. When we need to check to make sure everything's working, we'll go over to the simulate tool and we have a play bar that will show uh, the, the tool moving back and forth. And we can see what's happening. So we can simulate the stock and the tool and the operations and check to see if the model is doing what it's supposed to do. So we can show the tool. I, I'm not gonna show the whole entire holder just to demonstrate for this particular process. When we drop down here, we have a couple different options. We do wanna see the tool path. We also wanna see the stock in this case. We're facing this down. So it would be really great to see the, the stock as we, as we cut through. Um, I like to show the, yeah, the speed is good. And then we have position. It's giving us information on the operation that we're doing and any statistics. So it should take two minutes and 35 seconds to face this off. Um, so we'll just see how this looks. We'll hit play and we can see it's starting to cut our part. Now we're taking a full depth of cut through here, which is okay because we just are using the edge of this tool. I'm gonna pause this and hit check. There's two things that I noticed. As my part's coming in here, since I clicked climb cutting, I wanna make sure I'm cutting the right direction on the tool. But what's happening is I'm cutting backwards because I selected 90 degrees. So I'll go to my face, I'll edit. I will select here and instead of 90 degrees, I'll actually come in the opposite way and I'll do 270. And that brings my tool in over here, which gives me a nice clean cut. The other thing to think about, maybe you don't wanna cut all the way down in your depth. You can right click, edit your tool and under your uh, facing operation for your passes, you can click multiple depths and then you can choose how deep each one is going to go. So I know that I'm cutting a quarter inch, so let's just say I'm gonna cut an eighth of an inch. The tool's a quarter inch, so it's usually pretty good to go about half the diameter of the tool. So when I click that, notice that I have two passes now. Let's see, it's creating two one eighth inch steps. I'll go back and simulate this. I'll show my stock, I'll hit play. And now I am cutting from the other corner. And if I need to speed this up, we can see all of the passes. And it looks good. Now we can check our material. You can always add the stock in while you're simulating. Feel free to mess with some of the settings here to just get the desired result. At the bottom, there's a toolbar and it shows you exactly where you are. If there's a red line, it means that it's probably gonna crash or it's moving too fast or um, it's detecting the stock. That will give you a warning. Right now, mine's all green, so it should be uh, good to go. We're going to stop here for this video and we'll continue finishing our operations and doing post-processing next class.